Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about creating this effect. So we're just going to learn how to do this. This is a very simple way of doing the paper cut effect. There might be other ways as well, but this is what I'm going to show you today. Let's just open file and new. Let's make it 5 into 5 inches uh, so that we'll have a really short canvas to work with. I'm going to keep the color mode as CMYK because I really don't care about it right now. But if you're going to use this for screens, make sure it's in RGB. And if you're going to use this for print, it should be CMYK. So let's go ahead and start. click on create. We have our canvas ready. Now the first thing we're going to do is select a color palette. We need something like this where you go from the lighter shade to darker shade. It's okay if you don't have a color palette. You can create your own using the blend tool. I'll leave a link on how to do that. Or you can also pick these color palettes from the Adobe Color website. And I've mentioned this in a tutorial. I'll leave the link somewhere on the screen or in the description box. So for this tutorial, I've chosen a color theme, uh, which is pink. There's one more blue here. I could use this as well. And like I told you, if you don't have uh, colors, you can use the blend tool to make your own color if you have the lightest and the darkest. Or if you don't want to use the blend tool and you don't want to use Adobe Color, there's still one more method which you could use, which I'm going to cover when I come to this layer over here, because as you can see, I have just one, two, three, four, five color palettes, and that's one, two, three, four, five. And these two are something which I created on my own. So let's start. So keep it very simple. I have uh, used circles. You could use any shapes that you want. Let's start with a circle. Hold your shift key down to make a uniform circle. Click and drag so that you have a circle ready. Now I'm going to take this and place it, click on center so that it's just at the center. It's not necessary you do that. I'm going to push it down so that the center aligns with the bottom of my artwork. With the circle selected, I'm going to hold my option key down, shift key down, click and drag. Again, with the circle selected, I'm going to click option, shift, click and drag and then place it like this. So now we just have three and there seems to be some space over here. So I'm going to add one more to this option, shift, click and drag. And you can see it snaps right here. If you cannot see these pink lines, make sure your guidelines are on. To do that, you can go to view smart guides. So now once you have all these four circles ready, click and drag and select all four and press command G or control G to group them together. Now these are really grouped together and we're going to go ahead and click on horizontal align center. So if you cannot see this, you can go to window align and then you can see these options. So let's click on this and it gets aligned. Now we need to change the color and we'll start with the lightest color first. So in my palette, this is the lightest. So I'm just going to click on that. Now I really don't want the outer border, so I'll just cancel it. Okay, so we have the first row of circles ready. Now we're going to go and create the next one. So I'm just going to select now since we have grouped it, all four of them are together. Now click on option, click and drag to create another copy. But make sure you move it so that it comes and sits right here. So you have another row of circles ready, but I'm going to change the color to a little the next one. That's... Make sure you have your fill selector and click on this color so you have this ready. Now this is four circles but we need one more right here so I'm just gonna ungroup this. Command Shift G or Control Shift G. You can also right click and say ungroup. It'll be ungroup here. Click on this circle. Make sure you hold it in the center if you cannot really move it. Option Shift click and drag and make sure it snaps. So I'm just going to select all these circles by holding my shift key down and I'll use command G to group them together again. So now they're all grouped and now I'll press command shift and open bracket to send them to back. You could also do right click, arrange and send to back. So now we have the second line of circles ready. Now we need another layer behind that. So I'm just going to click on this. We have four circles. 
Option Shift or Alt Shift and drag and place it over here. Now we're going to send it really back. So press Command Shift and open bracket to send it to complete back. And we're going to choose the darker color. There you go. Now we need this one behind. As you can see, I've run out of colors on the palette. So what I'm going to do next is create my own. So I'll just press the I for eyedropper tool and go ahead and click here so that my circles are that color. And next, I will go to this palette fill here, double click on it, and you can see this opens up. So I'm just going to drag my pointer a little below. And you can see here that this is the original color that we have on the circles right now. And this is the color that you have on the palette. So I'm just going to move it a little more down so that it's a little darker. I'm going to click OK. So if you press V on your keyboard, you can go back to your selection tool. So I is for eyedropper, V is for selection tool. So once you have this, you can see that this is a darker color than this. So we're going to create one more because we need to fill the palette over there and uh, the artwork over there. So click on this and make another copy. Now we need a darker color. So I'm just going to press I. Make sure the circles are selected. Press I. Select this color. Go to your color palette. Drag it a little bit down. Make sure you drag it straight down because you'll still be in the pink shade but a little darker and click OK. Press B on your keyboard. Now I can see a little bit of space over there so I'm just going to create one more just to fill in all the blank spaces there. And OK. Let's get in. I to select the latest color. Double click. And we're going to move it a little bit down. OK. Yep. That sounds nice. Okay, so you have your basic pattern right here. But like I said, you need to create the paper cut effect. So all we are going to do is add some uh, shadows to this. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to select. We have grouped the circle, so it's pretty easy. So just select the circle. Go to Effect. Then you can go to Stylize. And drop shadow. You can click on this preview button here to see how it looks like. So you could actually reduce this if you want a really sharp shadow or increase this. And if you move the Y, you can see what happens. So I'm just going to keep it back at minus 1 because I think that's what I want. And X offset is at 0. You could change this to the left or right or however you want. Let's keep it straight because let's assume that the light source is from the bottom. And click OK. So as you can see, you have a blurred text effect over here as you can see right here as well once you apply a shadow and if you want to see what is the property just click on that and you can see your little appearance panel right here if you cannot see it go to window and appearance and then if you click on it you can see drop shadow if you click on it it will give you the exact uh, details of what's happening there like what what are your settings okay cancel and go back to mine, click on my circle, click on shadow and make sure it's all the same because I want it to be exactly the same. Okay, so now you have this shadow on this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select everything else. Let's do it really quick, okay? So we'll just go to effect and then go to stylize drop shadow. Uh, since you've already made that setting once and you're still going to see it, I'm just going to click on preview to make sure it's not... It's going to take some time because it's a lot of shadow effects. So click OK. I'm going to click outside. And there you go. You can see your paper cut effect right here. And you could export this as a PDF. All you have to do is go to File and Save As. And it'll, you can give the option as PDF. Or if you want this as a JPEG, go to File, Export, Export As. And let's see. You want to do it as a PNG. Make sure you click on Use Artboard. So once you click on Use Artboard, anything which falls outside this art, artboard gets, you know, ignored. So you get a very nice clean pattern right here. Let me click on this and show it to you. Let's make it as really high. So this is what you will see when it gets exported. So I'll be covering a lot more about artboards 
uh, in my next video but uh, for now let's just stick to this and click OK. Okay so this is the JPEG file that I have right now if I expand it so. So we have your light source right here and this area gets darker. That's how you get a paper cut effect and uh, you can make many more things with it. Uh, like I said you can use triangles or some uh, really nice shapes and do wonderful things with it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please give it a thumbs up and I know I've been MIA for a while but it's been summer and I've been traveling a bit so now I'm back and I'm gonna keep making videos for you guys. Do let me know if you have any questions or anything that you would like to learn. Please don't forget to hit subscribe so that you get updates whenever I upload a new video and also do check out my blog because I sometimes give out freebies out there. So until next week. Have fun!